In this video, we'll learn to use multiplication facts and make connections with division facts. If you've forgotten how to multiply or divide, go back to the entry three videos in these topics. What I will focus on in this video is the connection between multiplication and division. So let's start with an example. I've got five rows of small cubes and there are 10 cubes in each row. So we've got 10 and another lot of 10 and another and another and the final lot of 10. So five lots of 10 or five times 10. That gives us a total of 50 small cubes. So I've multiplied these two numbers to get the product, which is 50. I could have said 10 lots of five as well, because what I've got is 10 columns of five in each column. So either way, that would give us the same answer, that total of 50. And it is in a way like adding on. So we said 10 and 10 and 10 and 10 and 10 makes 50 or adding five and five and five and five and so on to make 50. Now, I'll get the same number of cubes, which is 50. So that total which we had there, we'll get it here. That final answer we had there, I'll get it to the front now. So I've got 50, I haven't done anything to them, all I know that this is the total. So what am I going to do with this 50 cubes that I have? Now I might decide to share them into 10. So I'm going to give them to different people, 10 to each person. So let's see how many people will be able to get 10. So if I share into or divide by 10, I'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the answer is 5. Or I could get this 50 and share it into 5s. So Let's see, I've got five in the first row, in the second and so on. So how many rows do I make of five cubes each? So there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So what this tells me is that multiplication and division are opposites of each other. So we started with five times 10 and it gave us 50, or 10 times five and it gives us 50, that total, that bigger number over there. Now that bigger amount has been shared into tens or divided by 10 and it gave us five. So what I'm doing is reversing this process here. I got 50 divided by 10 because multiplication and division, as we said, are opposites of each other. So 50 divided by 10 gives me five, or 50 divided by five gives me 10. And that is what's happened. Or if I reverse this, so we know that multiplication is the opposite of division. So I go five times. So instead of division, I go times. Five times 10 gives me 50. 10 times five equals 50. So how does this help us? Let's say if I do 12 times six, so work it out. So I will go six lots of two is 12 so two down and one carried over six times one is six and the one is seven so i've got 72 as my total now i can reverse that process to check that i've got this calculation right so i go right this is the total 72 
if I divide this by 6, does it give me 12? So again, doing the reverse. And let's see. So how many 6s fit into 7? That is 1. And there is 1 left. How many 6s fit into 12? That's 2. So that gives me 12. That proves that I did the calculation right. Or if I start with division, let's say I've got 540 and I need to divide it by 4. So let's do it. How many 4s into 5? That's 1. And we have 1 left. So how many 4s into 14? That is 3 because we've got 12. And then fives into 20 there is five of them so 135 is the answer for that but how can i make sure i've done the calculation right so i do the opposite now i've got 135 times four so four lots of five is 20 zero down and two over four times three is 12 and the two is 14 so four down and one carried over four times 1 is 4 and the 1 is 5. So 540, which matches the number that we started with. So that proves I've done the calculation right. So how do we know which operation to use, multiplication or division? Then you look for questions where you've got to multiply or it's lots of different things. Let's say shopping. If you buy eight bags of £12, then you know that you're going to be multiplying eight by the price of each bag and get the total or if you've got a budget of a hundred pounds and you want to buy as many books as possible or as many let's say frames as possible picture frames as possible if one picture frame costs five pounds then you've got to divide that 100 by five to get how many picture frames you can buy in total or whatever you're buying. So you look for keywords such as times or lots of or shopping or total to decide what to go for. Place yourself in that situation and solve the problem.